Hey there everybody and welcome back to a ModiMate step-by-step -step tutorial video where we are taking a project from its first clicks right through to a complete model that delivers instant DWGs, renderings, and quantity estimates. In the last video I said we would be working on millwork and cabinetry in this one, but I changed my mind, we're going to work on roofs. Roof design is one of the most geometrically complex tasks an architect faces in the schematic massing process of their building. We're going to be working on a hipped and gabled roof here in this design. It's a pretty simple plan, there's not a lot of angles to combine, but we are going to go through a few steps just to demonstrate how ModiMate covers things. We can cover advanced roofs in other videos, but this will be a basic one. Okay, this roof has a primary gable axis on uh, across the mass of the building this way, and a secondary smaller gable over here. The slope of the major gable will be 4 to 12, and for aesthetic street frontage reasons, the uh, slope of the small gable will be 8 to 12. All right, let's get rolling. We're going to use the massing graph line tool and draw these planes line by line. Fortunately, because we don't have to draw the thickness of these roof assemblies, it remains a pretty simple task to actually lay out the planes of the roof. This building's mass is 47 feet long, which means 23 foot 6 is the distance to the midpoint. And if 23 foot 6 is the length, and we want to divide that by its height, then we're looking at tw uh, 7 foot 10 as the, the rise on a 4 to 12 slope. 7 foot 10. And then we complete this triangle. And we uh, now have the face of the primary gable. We will use the rectangle tool to extend this sloped plane across the building. And as you can notice that the targeting it's a little bit confusing as you move your mouse, but as long as you move your mouse to the right destination point, you're going to end up fine in the end. We'll do the same thing for the opposite side of the roof, and we've now extruded the major gable across the, the building. The next step is to um, frame out or draw the just the face for the secondary gable. In this case, 13 foot 6 means that the midpoint for this uh, length is 6 foot 9 across. So this point should be 6 foot 9 from both ends. Indeed it is. And now if we want an 8 to 12 slope, what is 2 thirds of 6 foot 9? I bet it's 4 foot 6. Yes. I mean 6.75 divided, uh, divided by 2, divided by 3 times 2 is, yeah, 4 foot 6. Okay. Bring the line up here, and we're going to go up. 4.5 feet and then back down. We now have the framing for the secondary gable. And if we take this plane here and extrude it back, before I do this, I should just point out making one gable meet another is a classic tricky situation of finding snaps. We're all looking for this point. We want ModiMate to give it to us. Unfortunately, we're still working on the precise math for some circumstances of making gables meet one another. For now, we have a technique that will almost certainly get you the intersection points you're looking for, and that is to use the rectangle tools extrusion technique and extrude this rectangle right through the rest of the building. You can, you can go only this far if you're looking for just this one point. I think it would be wise for us to go all the way through, and you'll find out why. We now have the point where the high point of this uh, of the secondary gable comes back and meets the first gable, and we can complete this shape either by extruding this rectangle as previously done, or by simply using the line tool and connecting this point back to this point. Marvelous. We have all of our roof planes for the secondary gable. I can hide this and delete the unnecessary triangle in the middle here. It looks like there's some ceiling space that may or not, may not be desired. Hope that point's not deletable until I clear out this line. Okay, so we can come back and decide whether or not we want ceilings in that space later. I bet we will. But for now, I'm just going to unhide that plane and de delete that line there. So we have one nice unified gable face. And another thing we have is this uh, intersected rectangle. And that's because we're going to use the 8 to 12 slope as the chamfer for the primary gable. We will do this by tracing these two points, which gives rise to a new affordance 
within ModiMate. We always have red, green, and blue affordance axes, but there's one more secret affordance that only shows up when you've drawn two points that are off-world axes. We now have affordances that are uh, sorry, aligned to the two points you just drew. And in this case, that's the only extra affordance we have, but we can use it to extend upward towards the high ridge of this roof. And because of the rules of planarity, that line will perfectly align with this one. And we've just chamfered the major gable of the roof. So now your major gable and your minor gable are all sharing a plane. And this point is not necessary and can be deleted. Matter of fact, so could this one be. Nice. Oh, while we're at it, let's keep on rolling. Boom. We've got ourselves a continuous surface for eventual roof assemblies and shingling. But a quick sidebar, while I'm talking about off-axis affordances, if I use the line tool and I'm, let's say I'm drawing a floor plan that has an angled wing to it. If I click into the ground plane here and I start drawing a line that is off-axis, so it is not aligned to world green, blue, or red, it's just going to be on the ground at an angle, you know, laying there on the ground, but at an angle. We will see that pink affordances arise that are not aligned to the world. Instead, they are aligned to 90 degree increments from my line I just traced. So if you're ever trying to draw an angled wing of a building, you don't need to draw it aligned to the world and then rotate it. That's one way to do things, but just as easy is to work in the pink affordance zone where you can now use the smart rounding tools and draw a series of right angles and get nice right angled rooms. Um, and it's very straightforward. If you ever find yourself trying to add to the system later, but lacking your pink affordances, oh, I can't find them. I need to relate to this alignment, but I can't find my axis. That's because the uh, axis comes about when you draw a segment. So all you have to do is trace two points and suddenly your pink affordances are back. Um, happy modeling in the angled world. Uh, but we're gonna head on back and finish our roof real quick. We have this eight to 12 chamfer on one side of the roof. We have a straight up massive gable on the other side. It seems most likely in terms of having a pleasant height to the building as you walk by that we would want this side of the gable to be chamfered as well. So we're going to also create an eight to 12 slope here, run the plane through and do the same process that we did over here. Let's mock it up real quick. We're gonna go up 12 inches and then over, actually, apologies, up eight inches, goodness, eight inches over 12 inches and close that off. And we now have ourselves a tiny little plane that acts like a reference slope. We'll send it through and it has given us the two points that matter, which is this point and this point, sending us an affordance that we can now hold shift to constrain all the way up to the top. And again, because of planarity, to connect back down to the bottom and we have a point that we can take off the building's width okay so we will delete the construction elements here and here and here we now have ourselves two very large side chamfers that can cover the building's overall sides um, it's up to you whether you think this is an attractive elevation i think this is a pretty well proportioned roof line it, looking at it from the side, it starts to look a little bit um, silly, but that the nice thing about the likely subdivision in which this building would live is that you would never see it from that direct angle because there'd be at most 10-ish, 20-ish feet of pass-through space between properties. Um, so this looks just fine to me from the side. This looks great from the street frontage perspective. I would call this roof done. It's nice and simple. It does not need any more simplifying and we will get to ceilings uh, in a future video. All right, well, thank you for joining about roofs. Next, we will jump inside and start working on ceilings. See you there.